and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to work through an example of how we find the slope using function notation. So here, let's say we have a linear function f that has these two points. So f of negative 8 equals 1 and f of negative 2 equals 6. And from this information, let's find the slope of the line. So this is what I mean by function notation when we have the information given to us with our function f. So f of negative 8 equals 1 and f of negative 2 equals 6. So let's go back to our slope formula. The slope is the change in y over the change in x, except this time we're going to use that function notation. So it would be the change in outputs, which is the change in f of x, divided by the change in inputs, the delta x. And then from this, we would write our formula as f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. So this is just the change in the outputs. We do this by taking the difference between them divided by the change in the inputs, again by taking the difference between them. So this works exactly the same as when we had the y as our notation. Here we're just going to be doing a little more interpreting since we have the function notation. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite my information in point form, so in coordinate form with an x and a y. So if we have f of negative 8 equals 1, I can rewrite f of negative 8 equals 1 as the point negative 8, 1. Then I can rewrite f of negative 2 equals 6 as negative 2, 6. So this puts the input in the first position and then the output in the second position. Okay, now we have our two points and we just want to find the slope between them. So I'm going to label these as x1, f of x1, where that's negative 8 and 1. And then x2, f of x2 is going to be our negative 2, 6. Then we can put them in our formula. So we're doing f of x2 minus f of x1 which is 6 minus 1. So I'm just taking that information that I labeled and putting it in the formula. And then I would divide it by the change in x. So I do negative 2 minus a negative 8. So here it's really important for me to put the x2 values together and the x1 values together. Okay, so now I just need to simplify this fraction. In the numerator or on the top of the fraction, I'm getting 5. In the denominator, or the bottom of the fraction, I'm getting negative 2 plus 8 because of that minus a negative. Then this just simplifies to 5 over 6, and that's my slope. So I just want to comment that I sort of arbitrarily chose which point was which here. So I sort of arbitrarily chose which point was the first point and which point was the second point. So I just want to swap them really quick and show you that everything works out just fine. So we can label these the other way. I'm going to let negative 8, 1 be our x2, f of x2, and I'll let negative 2, 6 be our first point, so the x1, f of x1. Then we go to put these in the formula. I have 1 minus 6 in the numerator, and then negative 8 minus a negative 2 in the denominator. When I simplify this, I'm getting negative 5 divided by negative 8 plus 2. Then that negative 8 plus 2 simplifies to be negative 6, so I'm looking at negative 5 divided by negative 6. When we have a negative number divided by a negative number, that becomes a positive number, so those negatives cancel, and we're left with just 5 over 6. So real quick, let's just graph this before we end the video. So first, let's plot our two points. I have negative 8, 1, and negative 2, 6, and our line goes through these two points. Now, as we're looking at the rate of change between these two points going from left to right, I should see that the change in output is 5 and the change in input is 6. So that delta f of x is 5, we're going up 5, and then the delta x is 6 since we're going to the right by 6. And then this relates to our 5 divided by 6, our 5 over 6 is our slope. So the change in output over the change in input. All right, that's it for this one. Just a little example of how to do slopes with function notation. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.